Hello everyone, this is Steve. Uh, for those of you who have watched some of my videos, welcome back. And for those who are new to my channel, welcome as well. Uh, the subject of this video is the Sports Illustrated baseball game. Uh, that uh, The specific one that I'm, I'm focused on here is the 1972 edition, which uh, contained the uh, charts for the uh, teams that played in 1971. Um, specifically, uh, I have lately been playing the, replaying the 1971 World Series, and I've, I've gotten three games done already, and that was a series where the Pirates and the Orioles faced off. So, um, the purpose of this video will be to do some analysis of this game. I became familiar with this game a couple of months ago and started to become a little bit fascinated with it. Um, and then as part of downloading a lot of free information that's available, I discovered that someone, I believe named Randy Cox, had done an article. Uh, it's about eight pages, single spaced. It's an article that explains how to make your own um, Sports Illustrated charts or cards, if, if you prefer that format. And so um, I debated for a little bit but uh, I decided to go ahead and try to build my own spreadsheet that will generate uh, the charts for this game. Uh, I, I'm well aware that I'm reinventing the wheel here. Um, part of it was just the intellectual challenge, I guess, to, to see if I could do it. Uh, I was just coming off of actually spending a couple of months building a similar spreadsheet to generate cards for the uh, Status Pro 3rd Edition game. And um, so uh, I knew how much work was going to be involved, but in the end, I, I uh, couldn't resist and I built this spreadsheet for the SI game. So um, in the process of uh, playing uh, the World Series matchup here, replaying the World Series, uh, I noticed that Jim Palmer had a, a very strong chart here. As, as you may or may not know, he was one of uh, four 20-game winners for, for the, the uh, Orioles that year. Uh, he had a 2.68 ERA. Uh, he pitched 282 innings. Um, had a pretty nice uh, whip statistic, 1.195. And, um, you know, just a, a pretty, nice, uh, pretty nice line here. Fair number of strikeouts, um, kind of an average number of walks, I would say. So, um, yeah, so he had a, obviously a great year. And um, so, again, back to the chart, you can see on his chart that there are um, the rolls 19 through 22, where there'll be a, a fly out or a ground out generated without ever getting to the batter card. And then there are two blocks for uh, strikeouts without ever getting to the batter card. Those are the blue squares. And then the yellow square on, on roll number 34 is for walks. Uh, without going into too much detail, the, the unique 10 to 39 dice system um, causes the most likely outcomes to be in the mid-30s and probably the second most likely outcomes to be in the mid-20s. Um, the lower numbers, 10 through 17 or so, much less likely, and then 19 is actually the least, least likely outcome. But just like any other game that uses three dice, there are 216 possibilities uh, on any, any given dice roll. So as I had alluded, my impression was that his card or his chart here just seemed pretty dominant, uh, especially relative to the other players who had, uh, you know, equally good statistical outcomes or, or, or performances in 1971. So um, as I said a few minutes ago, I have this spreadsheet where I... Um, can create uh, a chart for, um, you know, 
for uh, Sports Illustrated Baseball. And I'm not going to go too deep into it today, but uh, it's, it's a very extensive chart. I've done my best to replicate the, the formulas in, in Randy Cox's uh, article. A few cases, I've, I've done a few things on my own, uh, but I think it all, all pretty well hangs together. So what I did actually is I, is I took Jim Palmer's actual statistics from 1971, put it into my spreadsheet, and, and you see a part of the spreadsheet here, kind of the key part. So what happens on the SI charts for pitchers is if the pitcher's batting average against in other words, the opponent's batting average uh, when he pitches is 221. And the league batting average that year was 247. So to, to get very, very simplistic, what that means is he was 26 points better than the league average. And what that means is there's going to be extra out chances on, on his chart. In this case, tw 20 extra out chances uh, out of 216 rolls. And then what you have to do is you have to split these up between strikeouts and groundouts and flyouts. And so this, this spreadsheet gives him a, an allocation of two chances for strikeouts, so slightly above the league average. And then everything else uh, is either a ground out or, or a fly out. Um, I will probably do another video where I explain how this whole spreadsheet works. Uh, and and I've been testing it. I think I think it, it works well, but I decided, you know, hey, this is this is a good opportunity to test the spreadsheet. And so what I did is I created a simulation spreadsheet, which I'll try to bring up on the screen here. And apologies, it's not real easy to see, but I'll explain, you know, what it does. I, I basically what I did is I took over here on the right. I took Jim Palmer's. 1971 chart, the one that was up on the screen here earlier, and I figured out, um, you know, how many, how many chances were going to be green and pass on to the batter, how many were going to be strikeouts and flyouts and so on. And, and as I showed you, um, at least on my version, uh, there were only two chances that, um, you know, that get allocated to strikeouts. On his original chart, there were um, 11 chances that, that, that uh, were allocated to, to strikeouts. Um, the, the other thing I did, and this will mean something if you're familiar with the SI game, is um, using the, the Baltimore starting defense, I figured out how many of the defensive checks on his chart would result in automatic outs. And so any time an 11, 12, or 13 is rolled on the first roll, it's uh, what's called an automatic out. It's a ground out. And so um, that actually works out to nine chances out of, out of 216. So I, I did replicate that then in here as, as well. So then what I did is I created a bunch of logic that would roll the dice uh, 4,000 times. And so, you know, I'd have a column for dice roll one and a column for dice roll two. And then I had a column that said, well, based on the preliminary or the first roll, you know, what's the outcome on the pitcher chart? Most of them are green, which means then you check roll number two. And then based on the batter's chart, you uh, determine the ultimate result. Uh, in the case of uh, if there's a strikeout, for example, that's rolled on the pitcher card, you just take that and you don't roll the second dice. And so what I did is I, I actually um, built a, you know, a lookup table for the pitcher, for, for Palmer. And then I also built a, a batter lookup table where, where I went to the um, league averages for the American League in 1971 and created a very generic batter uh, to represent what the, the league average batter would look like. And then I just matched them up against each other for a total of 4,000 times. And what I noticed every time I ran this, 
um, is that the batting average against the you know was was around 200, let's say, which is um, you know a good 20, 25 points, let's say, lower than than what happened in real life. And then I also calculated a statistic called uh, component ERA, sometimes known as ERC. And then in this particular set of iterations, it came out to 2.33. So again, a little lower than his, uh, his real ERA, which I think was 2.68. So, um, you know, not only did I run the 4,000 uh, plate appearance simulation, but every time you hit F9 on the on the keyboard, it does another 4,000 iterations. And, and so this kind of confirmed to me that, um, you know, that uh, Palmer's card was a little too, too uh, aggressive, if you will. And so what I did is I, I went and did the same simulation, but with the chart uh, that I created with my, my own chart making spreadsheet. And you can see, it depends on which simulation you do, but you can see that with my, uh, my, my chart, he, um, he has a 10 or 15 point higher uh, opponent's batting average. And, um, you know, and the ERA is, you know, maybe 30 points higher than, than with the original, original chart. So this is all well and good. It didn't prove a whole lot. Uh, but but it kind of gave me assurance that that, um, that my instincts were right. And then at some point, I was thinking about this, and I said, well, I don't have to do 4,000 simulations. It is possible to actually write formulas and compute the actual expected outcomes that you, you would expect um, based on all the formulas. And some of these formulas get kind of long. I don't know if you can can really see on, on the screen, but... But in any event, um, basically, I take you know all the expected outcomes and uh, produce them, and so here you have the same four thousand plate appearances. And as it turns out, um, based on the original spreadsheet, um, kind of the deterministic batting average against is um, one one nine six, so right around two hundred, as, as we suspected. And then if you go over to my chart. It's 208. So, you know, oops. Uh, so that's, um, you know, a good indication that at least my chart is closer to, to real life. Now, the one thing I, I did is um, I said, well, this has always bugged me about, about the Cox formulas is, you know, you have these automatic outs that I, that I mentioned. And the formulas really don't consider the fact that there will be some outs generated um, by these defensive rolls and or defensive checks. And so what I did is I said, well, what would happen if I would come over here and take on his spreadsheet and move the automatic outs over to be just green squares? Um, then, then what would happen? And so what happens is um, the expected outcomes change and lo and behold, the batting average against this generic league average hitter uh, goes up to 219, which is surprisingly very, very close to, um, you know, to his real life performance. So, you know, I guess a couple of conclusions. One is I think the Cox formulas in my spreadsheet work pretty well. Uh, they don't take into account, uh, as I said, they don't take into account the, um, the automatic outs, which can vary by, by you know, the defense that's on the field. And so if I undo those last two changes, um, we get back to um, a 208 uh, batting average against. Not, not significantly different, but a little lower. And um, so I, I found this interesting. I found it a little bit reassuring. I'll, I'll probably continue to build my charts the same way that, that I have been. Um, I have one little tweak in mind, but, but uh, I, I probably will not um, 
will not make that change. So, um, so there you have it. Uh, I didn't want to extend this much, much longer, but, uh, you know, I did, I did find it interesting. You know, I've been continuing to test my own spreadsheet. Um, one of the latest tests I did is to create, try to create charts for Dave Kingman and Aroldis Chapman. I haven't quite filled these in. These are actually Willie Stargell on the left and, and Bob Gibson, 1968 on the right. But, um, you know, that's, that's something that I'm, I'm going to do. And as I said, I will, um, I will go ahead and, uh, at some point make a video. It'll probably be reasonably long, or maybe I'll do, uh, the batter ratings as one video and the pitcher ratings as the other, but I will explain how this, uh, chart generation spreadsheet works. Um, I think if you're a math person like I am, you'll, you'll, you'll find it interesting. Um, so with that, I'm going to sign off. Again, comments are very welcome if you've made it this far. Uh, of course, liking and subscribing is fine too, but, but I really uh, like the dialogue. And if you're interested, you can find me on the Facebook page for SI Baseball. Thanks. Bye.